Good morning. Welcome to worship on the third Sunday in Advent. It is so good to be together. Let us begin with our call to worship. Our Lord loves justice. And, and hates, hates wrongdoing. wrongdoing. God keeps promises. And, and makes, makes up for what was lost. We will rejoice in the Lord. For we have been clothed with salvation. And let us sing, All Earth is Hopeful. <laughs> All Earth is Hopeful, the Savior comes at last. Furrows lay open for God's creative task. This the labor of people who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free. People of Israel, you heard the prophet tell a virgin mother will bear Emmanuel. She conceived him, God, with us, our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared. New highways opened, new protocols declared. Almost here, God is nearing in beauty and grace. All clear every gateway in his romantic haste. We first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This same Lord Jesus today has come to live. In our world he is present, in neighbors we see. Our Jesus is with us and ever sets us free. We confess our sins before God and one another, renewing God. You have yeah. come, come into, into our, our world, world to, to live, live among us, us. Yeah. yet yeah. we yeah. often yeah. lose sight of this and, and seek to manufacture our own truth. truth. We are afraid to share your word, lest others judge or mock us. We ignore your wisdom because it isn't convenient. We allow ourselves to be defeated by despair. Forgive our negligence and breathe new life into our heavy hearts. And dear friends, God knows our every weakness and still loves us and upholds our life. May your sins be forgiven, your past forgotten, and your hope restored in the name of our incarnate Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer of the day. Steadfast God, you, you never, never abandoned, abandoned your, your people, people when, when they, they were, were at their, their lowest. Their lowest. Hold, Hold your, your promises before our eyes that they might shine brighter than any darkness which threatens to overcome us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, kids. I hope you're having a great day wherever you're at. You know what? You like building things with blocks, like these Lego blocks? I've always kind of liked doing that. You can build all these great big structures. I like building towers. I like building things that go straight up. I think that's kind of a neat thing to do. You know, it kind of reminds me of how we are connected with God. Let's pretend that this is how we are connected to God. Now, remember last week when we were together? Last week I talked about that, you know, sometimes in our life, Things don't always go the way we want them. There, there's some days in our life where we're sad. And last week, I told you that it was going to be the week here during Advent that we're, it's okay 
for us to tell others how we feel. That, that we, we don't always have to have a smile on our face and be happy. And, and we can do that even saying that to God. And that can be kind of scary, right? Um, if we're not always our best with God, you know, it, it might make us afraid that maybe God won't like us anymore. And, it, and if this is our re relationship with God, you know, last week, maybe it felt like we did this. Uh-oh. What happened? The tower fell, right? Uh-oh. Let's figure it out. You know, sometimes when we're sad or when we're mad and we say that to God, sometimes don't we feel worried that maybe what we just did is broke our relationship with God? How are we going to fix that? Well, today we hear good news. Today we hear from the Old Testament prophet of Isaiah. And Isaiah tells us that there are going to be times where our relationship with God is going to end up like this. But then something great happens. Not by us, but by God. God comes and starts to put the pieces back together. God comes and makes our relationship with God whole again. We use a word called restore. God likes to restore us, bring us back, make us like we once were, make us almost new. Just like this tower. So while last week was a week that we were, we were given ourselves permission to be sad and mad and frustrated, you don't have to worry, kids, that God walked away. No, not at all. God waited for us to get all that stuff out, all that brokenness out, so that this week, God could rebuild us. Begin the process of rebuilding you and me up so that we can be our best to serve God and to do something really awesome during this time of year to tell others about the baby that's going to be coming. The baby Jesus in a manger. The great gift that God gives us. This week, we've got hope. We've got hope, and because we've got hope, and because our life with God is back together, you and me get to go out and share that good news with others. So be hopeful, kids. Give thanks to God for rebuilding our relationship. And remember, you're the church, wherever you may be. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Our lesson for this third Sunday in the season of Advent comes to us from the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them garland instead of ashes the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations. And in their riches you shall glory. Because their shame was double and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot. Therefore, they shall possess a double portion Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense 
and I will become an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples, and all who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with garland and a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what it is sown in it to spring up, the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Friends, grace and peace to you this morning from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We turn to the prophetic book of Isaiah, a book that brings to light the coming of the Messiah. We refer to Isaiah a lot during this time, during Advent. Isaiah, who begins to prophesy about what God is going to do, about the coming of this Messiah, who is going to be a powerful and transformational figure for all of God's people. So we turn to chapter 61 of Isaiah. And uh, if you listen closely to this poem, actually, if you go back, I want to encourage you to go this week and read chapters 60, 61, and 62 of Isaiah. It is such an awesome section of poetry that is written in that, in that book. Such uplifting words that we get about what God is going to do with this new covenant. You heard that, right? In, the, in this scripture text, what God is going to do. But in 61, we hear the story or the poem being shared. And there's actually two voices in the poem. Did you hear that? There is the poet, the speaker, who, re, who, who shares really kind of those first nine verses of the text. A and then there's a change. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the poem, breaks in the voice of God. God breaks in and says these words, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them recompense. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. The people of Israel were really good at covenant breaking. They were. They, 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 they made an art out of it. They were creative in how they would break the covenant that God would make with them. But just like I showed the kids in the children's sermon, they might knock the tower down, and it might be in many pieces, but God never broke the covenant with them. God would wait and come back and rebuild the relationship. If you've been listening this fall as we've been going through the Old Testament, we were hearing repeatedly how the people would lose sight, really, of God. They would lose sight of what God was doing for them. They would only really call out in desperation. The, the songs of praise, the thanks, would oftentimes get drowned out by their wants and their desires. Yet God remain faithful. And we get here to the book of Isaiah, and we find out that God is not only going to remain faithful with the people, but God is going to do something even more. This promise of an everlasting covenant. And we know what that ever everlasting covenant is. For Christians, we see that as what we are about to celebrate at the in a few weeks. Jesus. That covenant that comes in Christ. That covenant that comes when Jesus breaks into this world and, and ministers to all the people. All of a sudden, it's not a covenant with this small group of, of the people of Israel. All of a sudden, this new everlasting covenant is opened up to everyone, there is hope for the world. 
You know, last week I said, let's, let's, let's spend the second week of Advent giving ourselves permission to lament, to be sad, to, to just take all of, the, all of the crud that we've been dealing with, right? That darkness, that, that heaviness that we've been experiencing. You know, that second week of Advent, let's just let it out. And the reason why I was saying that to you was because I was thinking about this Sunday. What's coming into our world with light, with bright, shining light is hope is hope. Hope that gives us opportunities to begin to see new and better things in front of us. Hope that brings us restoration. We hear that today in Isaiah. You know, Jesus liked this part of Isaiah. As a matter of fact, the very first time he spoke in his hometown of Nazareth. He got up in the temple and he went forward and he grabbed the scroll and he unrolled the scroll and these were the words that he read. The first part of this section of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes. Jesus spoke these words in Nazareth. Those active verbs, did you hear that? Those twos. Then he rolled up the scroll, put it down and went back and sat down. And he said, these words of Isaiah have been fulfilled today as you hear me speak. Now that should have been something that brought the world hope, Right? How exciting it is that the words of Isaiah have been fulfilled here in Nazareth with one of our own, with Jesus. But we know how the story goes. There was no hope in Nazareth. The people didn't want to hear the transformational power of the word of God becoming flesh and dwelling among them. All they saw was the carpenter's son. And while these words should have brought them joy and hope, instead, it brought the leaders of the temple anger and resentment. What should have been the moment of building up was another, yet another opportunity for the tearing apart by the leaders. Jesus would be rejected. But the word still remained flesh. The word still dwelt with the people. And the ministry that would take off after that day, the ministry that would go all across the countryside, would come and bring what it says right here. Good news. We know what the good news is. It's the gospel. The gospel of Jesus. And we know that in that gospel of Jesus, we see the binding up of the brokenhearted, gathering them together and beginning the process to heal. Last week, we were broken. This week, we begin restoration. We feel the comfort. I hope you felt that last week when you spoke what you needed to speak. I hope you felt that comfort that comfort that we hear here in Isaiah, to provide. That gospel that Jesus shared was, was something that provided life and hope for the masses. Jesus' proclamation, reciting these words of Isaiah, 
for us this week is the hope that we need. Last week, we allowed ourselves to grieve. To grieve and lament. But friends, this week, this week with our hearts open, this week, we hope. We hope in the power of God's word. This power of the Holy Scripture that is relevant for today, that helps us get through all things in our life. We hope in our heart's restoration that is beginning right now, that darkness has been removed and now the light of hope is there and it's beginning to heal. We hope we hope in the rebuilding power of God. In this crazy time, we hope because we know what God is capable and is looking to do. And we hope in the power of that Holy Spirit. That power of the Holy Spirit that is inside of us, that guides us, directs us, and leads us. And we hope that as others see us this week, see us changed this week, that they will also come and offer their thanks and praise to God, that they will find their hope. Today we hope, and hope is a wonderful thing for us. Hope is something we can hold on to right now, no matter what is going on around us. Friends, may you hope and dream this week. And may you experience the joy and the freedom that that brings us. This new covenant that puts us on a path for our redemption and our salvation. Amen. See 
church, the world, and all those in need. More valuable than expensive clothes or symbols of status is the robe of righteousness with which you cover us. Teach us to treasure the gifts of your kingdom's blessings more than the material things which we are tempted to pursue. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Build up and restore ruined relationships and shattered connections with those from whom we feel distanced. Forgive harmful words and actions and teach us to value love and compassion above the need to be right and to justify ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Just as the earth brings forth shoots and a garden causes what is sown to spring up. You will give your promises. You will keep your promise to renew all of creation, even after all the damage it has suffered. Make us co-creators in your reconciling work, defenders of living things and the environment which supports them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. prayer. Those who mourn will one day celebrate again. Heal all those struggling with grief, regret, sadness, or any sort of physical illness, especially those things that we name. We pray for those who are experiencing medical tests or surgeries or treatments those who are lonely or homebound, homebound or homeless, those who are experiencing difficult times or financial stress. We pray for all who are grieving as well as those on our FLC prayer list. And we, dear Lord, pray for all who are affected by COVID, the frontline workers and all the patients and those who are in quarantine. Dear Lord, may we soon recover from this virus so that we can return to some sort of normal living. And today, dear Lord, we pray for all other cares we lay before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We honor St. Lucia for her generosity and devotion to her faith, and we pray to be as bold in our proclamation of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our, prayer. our prayer. Our eyes await the fulfillment of all your promises, the answers to all your prayers. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who taught us how to pray. Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. On this third Sunday in Advent, 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Comes the Savior promise long. Let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song. He comes the prisoners to release since Satan's bondage held. The gates of brass before him burst, the iron of fetters yield. He comes a broken heart to bind, the bleeding soul to cure, and with the treasures of his grace to reach the heart. of peace your welcome shall proclaim and have eternal fortunes ring with your beloved name remember that you are the church wherever you may be so go in love and peace to serve the Lord thanks, thanks be, be to, to God, God.